Hey everyone, I apologize if you guys don't like these videos or if these videos are um, bad quality. Um, I just am recording this one and your one for Thursday right after the um, last one I made. So if you don't like this, don't worry. I will not be doing this after this week, but I do want to kind of get ahead of some of the work that I need to do by making the videos all at once. So um, today what we're going to be talking about is kind of extending our ideas of exponential functions and exponential growth. And so we've already reviewed it. Uh, we've already done this on Friday, but I want to review it again. Exponential growth occurs when a is positive or a is greater than zero and b is greater than one for y is equal to ab to the x. So this is when exponential growth happens. And I guess I didn't really talk about it all that much, mainly because it's going to be coming into play when we do exponential decay. But really the important quality here is exponential growth occurs when b is greater than 1. So b has to be greater than 1. It cannot be 1 and it cannot be less than 1. b has to be greater than 1. Okay? And this occurs when a is greater than 0 as well. Because if we looked at the um, graph that we had on, where is it? Last time when we were comparing it, this was exponential growth. This was an a uh a value that was positive, but when we had a, a value that was negative, when we had negative, when we had this was y is equal to negative 3 times 2 to the x, what happened was, was our graph went for, it, it really just decreased because as we go down faster this way, this these numbers are getting smaller and smaller, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, and this was, wasn't more towards exponential growth, and I would say this is exponential decay, but that is again what we're going to be talking about on um, Friday, oh, sorry, Thursday. So the key thing here is exponential growth only occurs when this is a positive number here. Because this was negative three, negative, this tells me that I'm going downward quickly. When we had y is equal to three times two to the x or y is equal to two to the x, these two um, went exponential growth. These two went by really fast. These grew really, really fast. Okay, but exponential modeling and exponential growth, we have this when a is positive and b is also greater than 1, y is equal to a, b, the x. However, a lot of times in life, we like to represent exponential functions in terms of time. So we, when we want to represent a certain situation where things are growing over a certain amount of equal time period, so they're increasing all at equal increments, we will use the following growth model. Okay, so the exponential growth model is y is equal to a times 1 plus r to the t. Okay, a is equal to 1 plus r to the t. And the nice thing about this equation versus the one that we had before is, well, a is still the initial value or the initial amount. It's going to be the initial amount that we started with. And we have one word problem today, and that is it. So we're going to explain this, and I'm going to tell you what this means in terms of that word problem. A is the initial value, the initial amount. Whereas 1 plus r, now this is no longer b. 1 plus r kind of took the place of b. And 1 plus r is what we call the growth factor, where r is the growth rate. So 1 plus r is the growth factor, where r is the growth rate. So... Um, so we have a, 1 plus r, r, and then t, as you can probably guess, took in place of x, but t is just going to be time, that ink time period, the increments of time period. So this one's going to be a little bit of a quicker video because all I have is one word problem left, and then we're done. So here we have, the owner of a 1953 Hudson Hornet convertible sold the car of, at an auction. The owner bought it in 1984 when its value was $11,000. The value of the car increased at a rate of 6.9% each year. So write a function that models the value of the car over time. So this wants us in terms of y and t. So what is the equation in terms of y and t of the rate of the car? So if I do this, and I'm just going to say y is equal to a times 1 plus r to the t. Well, the question becomes... What is our initial value? Because again, A is still is the initial value or the initial amount. What was the initial amount that that car cost? 
Well, if we look back here and if we kind of kind of annotate this word problem, we can see, okay, well this, its value was 11,000. I can't, this isn't working very well. So if I do this, it's purple, oops. The value was 11,000 in 1984 when we bought the car initially, or the initial amount here was 11,000. So A in this equation is now gonna be $11,000. That is gonna be A. Oops, can't see that. A is going to be $11,000. Okay. The rate upon which it's growing increasingly at a yearly amount is 6.9%. So R is going to be 6.9%. And again, I don't know if you can see that, so let me just do this. 6.9%. However, if we want to write it in terms of a just a number, 6.9% is 0 0.069. 0 0.069, because again, 100% is 1, 10% uh, is 0.1, 6.9% is 0 0.069. If I move this over, so it's like in cents, 100 cents is a 1, 6.9 cents is right here. Not that you're going to have 0.9 of a cent, but 6.9 cent, this is right here. You can see that this is 6 cents right here. That's 6 cents and then 6.9 cents if we need that point, extra 0.9, but 6.9% is 0 0.069. So that's gonna be in place of R, and that's gonna be in place of A. So if we look at this, now our equation is 11,000 times by one plus 0 0.069 to the T. Or in other words, if I wanna simplify one plus 0 0.069, that is 11,000 times 1.069 to the T. Okay, that is my function that models the value of the car over time. I can put any value of t in here. Okay. Whereas the next question, this is these are very common types of questions. The next question here is say, okay, the auction took place in 2004 now. What was the approximate value of the car at the time of the auction? Round your answer to the nearest dollar. Okay. Well, if you think about this, we just said this was my equation, 1.069 to the T. And the question becomes, well, does it make sense for me to put 2004 in for T? Does it make sense to put 2004 in for T? Well, let's think about it and say, okay, what was the year of the initial for this initial amount? Well, that initial amount was in, sorry, I'm trying to read, uh, adjust this. The initial amount of $11,000 was the value of the car in 1984. Well, if we go back to our notes last time, we also said the initial value had an X value of zero. And this is where it's gonna be the same thing, but with T now, it's gonna be a T value of zero. So T of zero equals zero represents 1984. So again, if I re-explain that again, um, the initial amount A, so A of 11,000, comes from, or how we go back to this, our A value is known as the initial value. The initial value is seen on the table when X is zero. So in this case, this will be when T is zero. The A value would be the Y value at that X is equal to zero. So here, my Y value when T is equal to zero is 11,000. And T equals zero represent 1984. And so in other words, what I'm gonna say is, whoops, T is gonna represent number of years after 1984. Okay, number of years after 1984. And so the question becomes, okay, what? how many years after 1984 is 2004? Well, that must be 20. 20 represents 2004, okay? Oops, I <laughs> wrote the table on accident. So here, then, if I do this, it'd be y is equal to 11,000 times 1.069 to the 20th power. And if I do this in my calculator, 
So at this point, I don't expect you to know what a 1.069 to the 20th power is, but 1.069 to the power of 20. Let me just make sure that I did that right. 10 to the power of three. It's a thousand. Perfect. Okay. So one one point zero six nine to the power of twenty. This changes this a y is equal to eleven thousand times now one point zero six nine to the twentieth power is three point seven nine seven nine nine, and it goes on. It's that's just rounded, and I'm gonna multiply this to by eleven thousand. Whoops, eleven thousand. And if you do this on your calculator, you should get y is equal to $41,777.92. But they want this to be run to the nearest dollar. So the price of the car in 2004 will be $41,778. That will be the price of the car. Okay. So 1.069 to the 20th power is 3.79799. Multiply that by 11,000, you get this, and then rounding it to the nearest dollar would be $41,778. So if you wanted to write a sentence, you could say, the car is valued for $41,778 in 2004. Okay. The car is valued for uh, $41,778 in 2004. Okay. Please let me know if you have any questions about this whole modeling and what it really means. But again, this modeling equation really um, represents uh, what it is over time. It represents a value over time. And this is really going to be dealing with a lot of word problems. So you're going to be really, actually, it's going to be the whole entirety of your homework. It's going to be word problems today. It's going to be, okay, what's the price of this over so many years? Okay, so that is your job today. If you need to, pause the video right now to write this these notes down or pause the video at any point of this video to pause to write any of the notes that I've written down. I may have gone quick, I might have gone too slow, I don't know. But if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, use the discussion boards, and I will get back to you as soon as I see them. Thanks and have a good day.